Hey y'all, so on Dewey Fest in Laplace, Louisiana is this weekend. It is a craft and festival show, and this is my first time doing it, so I'm excited to kind of share my experiences with you guys. This is not my first craft fair, but I am having a bit of a steeper learning curve learning how to sell at craft fairs, and I am a comic artist and illustrator with two graphic novels out, a coloring book, and a prose and illustration book. So I sell those things as well as loads of original art and postcards, stickers, charms, and various other cute things. So I'm looking forward to sharing my experiences this weekend with you guys in this recap. All right, so it is Saturday morning, bright and early, and we're getting ready to set up at Cartoon Crossroads Columbus. Joseph is dressed in his little Lilliputian finery. I still need to make props for us. So I can't do this while holding a camera, so I'll check in with you guys once we get in there. Hey, so we are at Cartoons Crossroads Columbus in Columbus, Ohio, or CXC. As you can see, the show is just about to start. It starts at 11, it's 10.59. I am all set up. And I have a bunch of new stuff. This is my first Comic Con since the pandemic, so it's been a few years. So I have Lilliputian Living, which is my world building illustrated guide to Tiny Light. It contains four years of inked October prompts and the corresponding illustrations. I have my comic, Seven Inch Cara, both volume one and volume two. As you guys can see, it's in beautiful watercolor. And I also have Curious Little Things, my brand new cottage core Lilliputian coloring book. I'm really excited to have this one. It's my newest book, and I've gotten a lot of requests to release it as a coloring book, so I'm really happy to have it today. I've also got some color pencils and some crayons, so people can color with me. We can collaborate. I have a few example illustrations just to kind of demonstrate different materials. So, if, oh, I also have postcards and postcard sets just to make it a little easier to turn the pages. I have some beautiful acrylic charms. I have some new vinyl stickers, including this some beautiful holographic ones. I love these little witches. I also have some inexpensive paper stickers for the sticker fanatics. A lot of beautiful laser cut wooden charms. And I've got some of my original watercolors with me today. So if you're in Columbus, I hope you guys will come by. The show is free to the public. I've got a web comics panel today at three. And I've got a mini comic workshop tomorrow. I forgot the time, but I'll get back to you guys with the time. So if you're around, come on by and say hi.
grandfather was a sign painter. So even though the show's only been open an hour, you guys can see that there's a good crowd. Um, the staff said that there was a line waiting to get in, which is pretty cool. This is not the way to the bathroom, but I did want to show you guys just like an example, a little taste. There is a wide variety of art and artists and personalities here, which is fantastic. That's what I've always, always, always wanted to see in comics. That was like my dream when I was a SCAD kid, was to see a wider variety of faces and voices and experiences. So this is really exciting. Sorry, across the stream. Right. Oh, that is staff. That's the bulk of the show. That is more people. I'm going to go find a bathroom. So this is the end of the first day of CXC. Things went pretty well. Um, I also really enjoyed the webcomic panel that I was on. So that was a lot of fun and um, generally feeling pretty good. Let me show you guys my table front so y'all can see what's left. Okay, so Lilliputian Living's been selling really well. The coloring book has been selling really well, which is wonderful. The postcards are selling pretty well. The wooden charms, the vinyl stickers, the regular stickers, and then some of the acrylic charms are also selling really well. And we have been handing out a lot of cards and generally everyone is very friendly, very nice, very sociable. So it's been a lot of fun and I have to say it's a big improvement in terms of just like general vibes over SPX 2019. That was kind of a weird year. Okay, so it is Sunday morning at CXC. Well, technically Sunday afternoon because it's about one. Show opens at one. So it hasn't actually opened to the public yet. This is just other comic artists walking around, chatting, enjoying the show. We left the table set up last night since the library was going to be locked and I figured if fellow comic artists are stealing from me, we've got other problems going on. Um, everything looks great, so I think that did not happen. And uh, Joseph is somewhere around here. Hey guys, welcome. It is Saturday morning here at CXC. The Cartoons, Crossroads, Columbus. I always want to say comics because there is a bunch of comics here. And it is day two and the final day. I'm teaching the Make a Mini Comic panel at two o'clock today. So I have an hour of sales before I have to run off to go teach. But yesterday went really well and I'm hoping today is just as good. So if you're in Columbus and you see this, and you are looking for something fun to do today, you should head on down. It is a free event to the public, and there's a lot of cool artists and vendors here that you want to check out. Okay, so we just got back to the hotel room after CXC. All in all, it was a really good show. 
the general vibe was very friendly, very good natured. People seemed very comfortable in their own skins and were happy to make conversation, which is great because there's nothing worse than a show where the attendees and the other tablers are standoffish and don't want anything to do with you or with each other unless they're spending money at your table. So that is a huge plus there. I had a panel each day and each panel lasted about an hour. And I think given the duration of the show and the show hours, that is a lot of time to spend away from the table. I, in my second one, which was the make a mini comic one, I didn't, there wasn't anyone to help me present and no one showed me where the materials for the workshop were. We ended up kind of finding them as we went along. So that was not so great. And I never actually had a chance to mention that I'm tabling and that they should come see me. So that's also kind of way with that. The hours for today were from one to five, which is great in that we got to sleep in, but not so great in that it's just kind of a very compressed show. Uh, the space behind the tables, as I've mentioned before, was just way too small. You couldn't have two people standing back to back, frankly, let alone two people sitting back to back or any room for banners or any room for stuff or just basically con anything. So the organizer is already aware of that. So I'm not like complaining to complain at him. I'm just bringing that up that that was an area that could have been finessed. While the comp floor was loud, no one was like blaring music. It wasn't like it was loud because the show was making too much, like, you know, playing music to compete with sales. It was just loud. It was a lively show and people were happy to be there and excited to be there. So it was a good kind of loud, but it, 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 it also has a tendency to kind of be very overwhelming for a lot of people. So I think potentially having sales open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday could be a good move in the future. Um, I also know they're interested in bringing editors back in to walk around and to do portfolio reviews and stuff. I think that would be an excellent and much needed move. And frankly, I feel like I liked CXE better than I liked SPX. Everyone was super nice. I met a bunch of really cool people. I saw a huge variety of really good looking art. Like it was just great. It was what I would have wanted, what I want from an IndieCon. And it's if Louisiana could replicate that, I would be so proud. If that could be part of my legacy, I would be so proud. So um, it does take a lot of coordination. It takes a lot of volunteers. Speaking of, their volunteers were great. Everyone I met was very professional, very friendly. If they didn't know the answer, they found someone who could. Uh, no one was rude to me. They walked me to my panel so I didn't get lost because it's not my library and it wasn't a big deal. I really appreciated that. However, and my Make a Mini Comic Workshop did have a lot of attendees, but it was like kind of hidden in like the study room and there weren't, there wasn't like a lot of signage to really promote some of their kid track programming that I saw. So that could be an area of improvement if that's something they're interested in is being like a two calf and having a lot of kids and younger artists educational content. Uh, they did have these star balloons to denote all ages tables. No one ever asked me what the balloon meant or I don't think it really did anything to bring people over but it was a nice touch and I do appreciate it. And I do appreciate that you have like a clear designator that you can see from far away if you have kids of which tables you might want to visit or which tables you might want to avoid. On that note, while there were some kids there, it wasn't as much as say, there weren't as many families as say a two calf. So that might be another direction to explore is getting the word out to low, especially if you're going to have kids programming or teen programming is to get the word out to local schools um, and youth groups and churches about the show and the fact that it's free to the public, which is also excellent. I love a good free to the public show because it means they have money to spend on us. So I will probably say more in this recap later on, but Joseph's telling me to wrap it up. His arm's getting tired. So I'll talk to you guys more about it later. So we're coming back from CXC. Uh, we came up on Thursday. This is Sunday night. We picked up quite a few comics while there. Uh, Becca wanted me to talk a little bit about the sort of things we picked up. Uh, Drop was from Alec Longstrict. He was right behind us, uh, so we did a trade for that. Uh, Weeaboo, Becca has been eyeing for a while, so we got that. Uh, this was from one of the wonderful women's comics creators. Uh, Puppy Knight just caught my eye because it's beautiful. Tukey, I bought from my brother-in-law. 
He's a big Jeff Smith fan. I am as well, but I have to admit I have been keeping up with what he's been putting out lately. Uh, this I also got from my brother-in-law. It's a very eclectic uh, metal-themed um, comic. Uh, Becca picked up some of these things. Uh, migraine Hell, I just thought uh, would inspire Becca because she gets migraines often. Uh, Courtney Hahn gave us one of her books, Tig. Moonstruck, I thought, uh, was something Becca might be interested in. She got Slam, Agents of Slam as well. Uh, of course, we had to get some nature-inspired things. Magic Nation, I've been reading that. It looks pretty good. Uh, the plot is actually from Neil Braidu. I've been following his work since, I think, The Plot 2 came out. It's been slow publishing. Um, he runs Radiator Comics. It's a pretty good comic. Hyper Mutt was across from us, uh, and I just like the look of it. Uh, Mr. Pop-Tart, Becca picked up. Faster, I think Becca picked up. Oh, no, I picked this up. Yeah, I, I talked to the creator. We actually had a discussion about this spread right here because I told him I admired the, the marketing aspect of that the center of the book is so striking, and he told me it was entirely on accident. I don't know if he meant to share that story with everyone, but it is now. Uh, you Smell Like Pancakes is from one of our wonderful uh, volunteers at CXC. Um, she actually was generous enough to just gift us a copy. And Roy's Day Out, Becca picked up as well. So, a uh, much smaller haul than what we've done in other shows, but I didn't give it enough time to walk around, really, so... There's more, too. It's just packed in my luggage. I'm sorry. Yeah, so this isn't the complete haul, but uh, it's I'd say it's the majority of what we bought at the show, and it's going to give us some good reading for a little while. Generally, the pros are it was free to the public, which I love that. Library Con should be free to the public. That I think most of them are, or maybe an optional donation if you can afford it. But the free is a big deal. It gets new people in. It gets people who have never tried this out before in. It puts people in a better mindset. It makes them more open-minded about it. It means more families with kids will come in. And it means people are more willing to spend money because they didn't have to spend that money to get in. So free is great. Um, also, it is a beautiful library. It is probably one of the most beautiful libraries I've ever seen. I think it's prettier than the Nashville Public Library, which their main branch always felt very cold and sterile to me. The Columbus, Ohio Library has this really fun dino display that I wasn't able to get for you guys because I was always carrying stuff or I was going to show, uh, panels. Um, but they, even though it is beautiful and historic, they find ways to soften that and make it friendly and approachable. And I love that. Um, what else? The hours were easier. I love shows with later hours, like not nine in the morning, but 11 o'clock. That is good because I work at night, so it's easier for me to shift over. I felt like five o'clock was kind of early to end. Six would have been good, but I understand that they're working within library hours. So while I would love to see them go till six, I understand why they can't. Um, the staff was great. The panels were fun. The attendees were so nice. I don't think I had any negative interactions this weekend, which is kind of mind blowing to me because every con has like that one person, but I don't think I had any. I think they were all wonderful, which is so surprising. We almost so, okay, so I didn't really tell you guys how much of what I brought, but since I was flying and we're dealing with a 50 pound weight limit per bag, and there were two of us, so we could bring more than someone going by themselves. We had four checked bags between us, and then we had no heavy overhead stuff because my back is wrecked. Um, so I brought 10 copies of volume two, 10 copies of volume one, 10 copies of Little Lilliputian Living, and 10 copies of Curious Little Things, the new coloring book. And I don't know off the top of my head how many I sold of Lilliputian Living Volume 2 or Volume 1. Volume 2 did not sell particularly well. That's not surprising. This was a new audience. Usually people will buy the first book and then if they like it, they'll get the second book, which speaking of, if you liked the first book or if you liked it as a webcomic, please consider buying the second volume through the Natto shop. If you have never read any of my work, all four books are there. I hope you guys will check them out. Um, I did sell a few volume ones, not as many as I would have liked. 
just because it's my comic and it's my baby. I sold more Lilliputian Livings than Volume 1s, which I'm good at because I worked really hard on that. It is also my baby. And I sold all but one of the color. So I sold nine coloring books, which is not like phenomenal, but considering the hours I had and how much I was away from the table, I would say that's pretty good. Um, so I felt really good about the book sales. They could always be a little bit better, but some of that is on me. Some of that is on the amount of time I was able to be at the table. Some of that was on the fact that I didn't bring my big portfolio with the original comic pages, which almost always sells books. Um, just due to space constraints and time constraints and luggage constraints. I also didn't bring as many originals as I usually did. I kind of surprised myself because I thought I brought more originals than I did. Uh, so I couldn't even cover the grids. I didn't expect any of them to sell. They're just an eye catch and a conversation starter. If they sell, that's great. But if they don't, that's great too. They didn't sell. I sold a lot of the postcards. People really did like my art. They were happy to see it. I got to talk about the YouTube channel a lot, which if you're here from the show, hi, thank you so much for joining me here. You were a delight light it basically doesn't matter who I'm talking to because y'all were all a delight y'all were so good I feel so this is what I needed honestly because I was uh, I'd, I'd lost a family member recently and I was just having a really really hard time and things are still not easy but they're easier to cope with after getting to spend a lovely weekend with you guys so I want to make that crystal like whatever complaints improvements nitpicks I have they are small in comparison to the immense amount of fun and good vibes that I got from this show. I really did like this show. Um, so hi, I'm glad you're here. I hope you'll consider subscribing. What was I gonna sold a lot of postcards, sold a lot of charm, wooden and the newer acrylic charms, and got to just talk to people about making comics and sharing your web comics online and manufacturing like charms and stuff, which I love to do. So that was all great. Like I don't make comics to make money because Lord knows I'd be in the wrong industry 100%. I make comics to make a community and make friends. And sometimes I feel like I'm in the wrong industry, but this weekend made me feel like I was very much in the right industry. Um, so another kind of nitpick is I was all the way towards the back. And on Saturday, we had a good flow of traffic. But on Sunday, when they weren't doing as many signings, there were dead periods. So um, you can't really help where you're at. But, tra but the front was still packed, like people couldn't get to the back. So making those aisles bigger and encouraging flow, maybe having one of the middle aisles really wide, although that would suck for the people there. So maybe the edge is wider, I don't know. Someone who is good at that should volunteer and help them with that because traffic control is really important. But having maybe an aisle or two that is meant for through traffic would help a lot because it would mean that people can easily get to the rest of the alley. And I also noticed that the people along that back wall just didn't get as much foot traffic, it seemed like, as the people at the front of the show. And foot traffic isn't everything, because when I used to do anime cons a lot, if you're at the front of the alley, that's bad, because people are still looking, they're still saving their money. You really want to be in the middle. The middle is the sweet spot. That's when the wallet starts to open, because people have seen a lot of cool stuff and they're ready to spend money. Speaking of cool stuff and spending money, because I didn't really get a chance to get around the alley as much as I would have liked and talk to other creators as much as I would have liked, there's a lot of cool stuff I saw in passing that I meant to go back for, but due to con brain and being busy, I never did. So that swap meet would be so helpful. I did pick up a lot of cool stuff and I did get to meet some really cool people um, like Kat and like Aziza and like Fend and like Colleen. And I that was a blast. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Um, but I would have loved to meet, met, meet, met, mo moat, more really cool creators. Give me a sec. And as someone who is shy and has social anxiety, well, I'm an introverted extrovert or an extroverted introvert. I love people, but as someone with ADHD, I've been shot down a lot. So I love when people come to me. So the swap meet would have been way easier for me to just make friends and make conversations. So that is definitely a real thing to maybe consider. Do it at a coffee shop where we can all have caffeine instead of at a bar where a lot of us can't drink or don't drink or would prefer not to drink. Um, that would be so good. But let's actually talk about money because um, I y'all saw what I brought because we got shots of the table. I talked to you about what worked, what didn't work, how wonderful the attendees and the staff were. I cannot express that enough. I cannot. I've done so many shows 
that left me dead inside almost. And this was amazing. So like, this is, this reminded me of like what I really love about indie comic shows and about um, comic shows in general. So, you know, mwah, I love it. Perfect, beautiful, more of that, please. So let's talk about the financials. All right, so I sold 372 total gross revenue. That's how much product I sold. We're not talking about how much it costs to manufacture my stuff. We're not talking about flight or any of that. That's just how much I sold there. I sold 228 on day one and I sold 144 on day two. So you guys can see the shorter hours and then the percentage of time I was away from my table being at a panel in the middle of the day, in the middle of prime time, does have a negative effect. My total unit cost for items, so that's what it costs to manufacture what I had, and that's an amalgamation. Some things are cheaper to manufacture, some things are more expensive to manufacture. The Versa comics are less expensive because we bought a thousand of them, so bulk, but volume two didn't sell so well. Uh, those are cheaper to manufacture than the uh, KDP slash CreateSpace ones where they take a bigger cut. Um, anyway. Our total manufacturing cost for what we sold was $141.93. So basically all of day two's take. So the money we made, if I hadn't had to travel, if I lived in Columbus and I didn't have to pay for parking and I just hefted my stuff over and we're not even talking about the table costs, um, I would have made $228 at the show, which you can't make a living off of that, but, um, Again, a lot of this is getting to meet people and making connections and making contacts. So that is still important. That is, we consider that an investment. So without considering lodging, table costs, etc., there was $230 of profit. The con cost, not counting food, was $1,591.20. So that is the table, that is the hotel, that is the airfare. The total loss at the show was negative $1,359.13. So don't let anyone kid you. Very few people make the big bucks living the con life. The table itself was $180, which is pretty median for the price. Although I do think the con hours should either be longer or there should be an extra day and that would really help justify that price. Um, 610 was the total cost for mine and Joseph's flights. And since I was gone for an hour each day, having someone to watch my table was essential because that was not a service the show offered. Another thing is they brought around these cones that you could put on your table to signify that you needed help from staff. Someone came and took ours because they didn't have enough to go around. I don't know why we were the lucky ones who had ours confiscated, but my friend who got to keep theirs said they wore theirs on their head because they needed to go to the bathroom and they needed someone to watch their table for them and no one ever came. So they ended up having to just put up the be back later sign. So while the staff was around and attentive, there were control, there were flow control issues that made it, I think, hard for staff to see when people needed help. Even a text messaging system, which could be based off of something like Epic. Joseph could probably whip something like that up for them because he has experience with that if they contacted him about it. Even that could be really helpful, kind of like what r restaurants do with the, we'll text you when your table is ready, something like that. Would probably be a little bit easier than relying on a visibility thing. Half of the total room cost for four days. So we split the room with two friends um, so we paid for half because there's two of us. So we paid $681.21. We stayed in the Courtyard Marriott, which was technically in walking distance if you were a man and you weren't carrying anything and you weren't afraid to walk alone at night. But we only had one cis man in the group who would not be afraid to walk alone at night. So uh, our friend Heidi drove us there. And uh, so that meant we were also paying for valet parking, which was $30 a day. However, parking at the library was free that weekend. So that was really beneficial and it was in a parking garage. And then we had 38 customers total. So um, hopefully those financials are helpful for you guys. I will post, I have them written down for my con brain. I'll put that down in the description for you guys uh, and hopefully that helps. 
So what is my verdict on Cartoon Crossroads Columbus? This is always a tricky part because I've done so many recaps and I've helped so many other artists. And then when it's time for me to apply for a table, oh, there's no room at the inn for you anymore, Becca. And I'm out of money. So um, not to hit y'all up, but if you found this helpful, useful, or informative, and you like what I do, and you'd like to help me continue to do it, and you want to incentivize me to continue to share these Honest Con recaps, it would be a great help if you join me at Patreon. You can join me at patreon.com slash soup. $2 a month goes a huge, huge, huge way, and it offsets a lot of the costs. I use that money to buy the supplies that I review, but it also incentivizes me to share these recaps with you guys openly and honestly. Would I recommend you do CXC? It really depends on what your goals are as a comic artist and who you are as a comic artist. I mentioned earlier the print walls where people have just like buku prints of every anime character under the sun or every Marvel and DC character under the sun. This isn't your show. Um, if you have small originals that you want to sell, this could be your show. I saw a lot of people selling that. I didn't bring mine just because that was like a space thing and a flight thing, but this could be a good show for that. If you want to take small limited commissions, this could be a good show for that. If you have a bunch of minis and zines, this could be a good show for that. If you have self-published comics, this could be a good show for that. Um, and if you are looking to meet other comic artists, if you're looking for a very friendly crowd, and if you're just looking to remember why you're making comics and who you're making comics for, this could be a good show. Or something else I am gonna put in again, but am I going to do it in the interim? No, to not waste their time and to not waste my time and to make sure that other people who have something new that they're eager to sell have a chance to table at it too. Because part of being a commun in a community is assessing what you actually need and not taking more than you actually need. So I hope you guys found my CXC Con recap to be interesting, helpful, and informative. If you guys have any questions that I can hopefully answer, check the description because I am going to have links and resources down there for you guys, so please check it. But also feel free to ask me down in the comments below, or you can join me on my art-centric Discord server, The Paint Box, and I will have a link to that down in the description as well. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If I saw you at CXC, Thank you so much for stopping by. You were truly a joy and delight. I mean, everyone was so great. It was such a good weekend. Thank you guys so much for making it such a wonderful weekend. And I will see you guys at On Dewey Fest with a festival recap. So keep an eye out for that. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.